I won't name any names, but I think it's fair to say that there are some Kroger's competitors that aren't providing the same levels of health care. That undercuts your business, but it also means that those folks, a lot of times they're going on Medicaid, which you pay for out of your taxpayer dollars, or they just don't have health insurance and they show up at the emergency room to get care. And the hospitals, because they've got all this uncompensated care, they jack up everybody else's insurance premiums to help cover their costs. So one way or another, we are all paying for other companies not providing health insurance. So here's what we've said. What we've said is small businesses, look, a mom and pop shop, they got three employees, four employees. We just want to make it easier for them so they can join this exchange that we just talked about. We'll provide them some tax credit so they can help uh, provide health insurance for their employees. But if there are companies of a certain size that are making a certain profit and they're still not providing health insurance to their employees, then what we're going to do is say, you know, either you pay or you play. If you're providing health insurance, that's great and we're going to help you. But if you're not help providing health insurance, then you need to pony up a little bit of money to help pay for the fact that somebody somewhere is going to be taking care of your employees' health care. And I think that's only fair and that will kind of level the playing field uh, between Kroger's and some of its competitors. All right? Okay. Uh, Young lady right here. Thank you, Mr. President. My name is Charlotte Norman from Bristol, Tennessee. I have a mother that is, will soon be 90 years old, and it's obvious that I'm a senior too. Uh, rumor has it that if we get this new health care system in, that uh, we won't get the health care, our doctors and all that we have now, that virtually people, older American citizens will just be put out to pasture. Please tell me that isn't so. It isn't so. I, I mean, I, I don't know, look. Nothing burns me up more than hearing some of these scare tactics directed at seniors. You know, because seniors, they're vulnerable and they get worried about some of this stuff and, and they get some, you know, crazy flyer in the mail and, uh, you know, they get scared that they might lose their, their care. So let me just be absolutely clear. Medicare is in place and as long as I'm there and even long after I'm gone, Medicare will continue to be in place. We're not gonna, we're not gonna mess with Medicare the only thing, as I said, that we want to do is to try to make Medicare a little more efficient because the problem we've got right now is Medicare is running out of money. For the same reason that uh, healthcare systems generally are really having problems, the costs are going up faster than the amount of revenue that's coming in. If we don't do anything, then Medicare is going to be in the red in about eight years. Think about that. Only eight years from now, Medicare is going to be in the red. So what we've said is, let's make it more efficient. Let's work with doctors. Let's work with hospitals to figure out, instead of taking five tests, if your mom has something that she needs to, to check out with a doctor, instead of ha her having to take a trip to the doctor, he takes a test, then he calls her later, says, this is what I think's wrong with you, so I'm referring you to a specialist. She's now got to take another trip to another doctor. Because they didn't send the other test forward, she's got to take another test. Why not just have her make one visit, have all the doctors show up at that one visit, take that one test, diagnose her right there. That's what really good healthcare systems do, but not enough of them are doing it. And a lot of them don't have computers that can send the, the, the test results electronically so that they don't have to uh, take multiple tests. There are a whole range of things that we can do to make the system more efficient. That's number one. The second thing she should like, depending on how much she uses prescription drugs, we pay 77% more for prescription drugs, we as Americans pay 77% more than any other country on earth. Think about that. 77% more than Canada, than France, than Mexico. Now why is that? 
The, the, the drug companies will tell you, well, it's because we invent a lot of these drugs and we put a lot of money into research and development. That might be true for about a third of the difference. The other third of the difference just has to do with the fact that they market a lot, they pay for all those TV ads, they don't give discounts at the same rate, and we don't negotiate with them. When they passed the Medicare prescription drug plan, they didn't negotiate with the drug companies for the cheapest available price. So what we've said is, let's negotiate. If, we're, if taxpayers are paying all this money to drug companies, the least they can do is give taxpayers a good deal under Medicare. And to their credit, the pharmaceutical companies have already agreed to put up $80 billion. They put it on the table. They said, we will help use this to close the so-called donut hole that uh, you know, is really causing a lot of seniors a lot of grief. I don't know if everybody knows what the donut hole is, but after you hit a certain level of prescription drugs out of Medicare, suddenly you stop getting help out of the Medicare plan until you know, you've spent several thousands of dollars. A lot of seniors can't afford it. So they end up cutting their medications in half, which aren't as effective, or they just don't take their medications at all if they can't afford it that month. And that's not good. And by the way, it ends up being more expensive because if they're not taking their medications, they may end up in the emergency room and we'll all have to pay more anyway. But just tell your mom, nobody's messing with her doctor, nobody's messing with her Medicare, uh, and, and people should not believe all this stuff they hear about. Uh, <laughs> I got one letter from a woman. She said, I don't want government-run health care. I don't want your socialist plan. And don't touch my Medicare. <laughs> and I, you know, I had to write back to her, ma'am, you know, Medicare is a government program, but don't worry, I'm not going to touch it. Uh, but, you know, sometimes folks get stirred up uh, without necessarily uh, having all the facts available to them. So, all right, uh, gentleman's turn. Gentleman right here. Oh. Mr. President, um, you've already just finished covering one of the things I was going to talk about, and that is uh, the drug manufacturer is charging us so much more. Right. Uh, the other thing, uh, there's only been a couple of states, Texas being one of them, that have passed tort reform. Okay. And I think uh, one of the other reasons that medical practice is going up so um, is because of the uh, malpractice insurance. And if I think we have some really good laws uh, governing tort reform, that should help a great deal too. Well, I, I, I appreciate the comment. I, I am actually in favor of figuring out ways to lower uh, malpractice insurance for doctors, because in some cases it's way too high, especially for uh, ob uh neurologists. You know, there's some specialties where they've got to pay $250,000 every year for their insurance, and it doesn't make much sense. And in, in rural communities or you know, uh, communities where generally the cost of living is lower, uh, it means that you just don't get a lot of people going into those communities who are ob and neurologists because they just can't, their incomes can't support the insurance. So it's a problem. I have to tell you though, I actually asked um, a bunch of healthcare experts about this, is the reason that costs are going up because of malpractice high malpractice costs and what they call defensive medicine. You know, you're, take, you're doing, doctors are doing five tests because they're worried that they might get sued if they don't do those tests. And it turns out that the evidence at least is that that is a very small, maybe not even a, a measurable factor in the reason that healthcare costs are going up. And, and the, the reason they know that is because they look at Texas and they look at these other states with caps and it turns out that their health care costs are going up just as fast. And the, 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 there was an article recently, the, the single place where costs are going up fastest, where per person care is highest in the country, is actually in Texas. So it, what, what you find out is, is that more than anything, it has to do with how we're reimbursing doctors, how we're reimbursing uh, hospitals. Are we asking for high-quality care rather than just more care. 
the problem is right now we've got a system called fee for service. You basically pay if a doctor uh, is reimbursed for each time he takes out a tonsil, but he's not reimbursed for uh, providing counseling for a child to change their diet because maybe they've got an allergy, then over time, system-wide, even if each individual doctor is doing their best, system-wide what you see is more and more people getting their tonsils taken out.